He left me no choice. Because it was necessary, not because it was written. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today, we're reading the runes and checking our prophecies as we unearth 10 God of War fan theories that might be true. For this list, we'll be looking at story elements that caused fans to read between the lines and come up with their own possible explanations for some of God of War's most important unspoken moments. Have any theories of your own about the events of the God of War franchise? Let us know what they are down in the comments. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Old Norse. Leave. My. Home. No one could ever accuse Kratos of being the talkative type back during his days bringing down the gods of the Greek pantheon, but even by his own standards, Kratos is a far more careful and reserved speaker in the 2018 sequel. Many fans posit this is due to Kratos speaking Old Norse instead of his native Greek. This would account for the slow delivery of many of Kratos' iconic lines, as well as the more deliberate way in which he only speaks when necessary, instead relying on mostly grunts for communication. Atreus alludes to the fact that Kratos can already speak the Nordic language when he attempts to teach Kratos how to read the runes in Tyr's temple. And later in God of War Ragnarok, it's stated that Kratos has learned to read the runes, so therefore his language skills could have improved as well, especially considering he's much more talkative in the sequel. So what do you say? No. Ares' soul. Every bit as weak as the day you begged me to save your life. I am not the same man you found that day. The monster you've created has returned to kill you. After all the absolute torment Kratos went through at the hands of Ares, it makes sense that Kratos felt a swift death was too good for the former god of war. After successfully having his revenge and assuming his new role as the god of war, Kratos is given access to Ares' former throne room. Those who beat the game on Give Me God of War mode, however, are given a phone number to call in which Kratos congratulates them for their skill and gives them an audible tour of his throne room, including an area he claims not even Zeus knows about. Upon opening the door, we hear the screams of Ares being tortured, and Kratos pondering why his soul still resides here. There are some who propose the return of Ares could call Kratos back to his former home in an upcoming sequel. Or it could just be a forgotten Easter egg. The soul of Ares itself. The soul of war. The soul of hate. See how it rides in pain. See how it struggles to be free. And yet, here it stays. The Oracle's identity. Beware, Kratos. The dangers in the temple are greater than you know. The Ghost of Sparta, a name so given as a reminder of the horrible act he committed by murdering his own family. But what if it was all by design? This theory proposes that the Oracle was in fact a Siphony, the fury of the mind under orders by Ares to complete Kratos' blood oath to him by spilling the blood of his own family. This would not only explain her suspicious nature, such as her evil laugh, but also why she wears the amulet of Ares bearing the Greek symbol of war, as well as why out of all places, Lysandra and Calliope were in that exact village. Further credence to this theory is presented just before Kratos kills the Siphony. She transforms into the Oracle, proclaiming with her final breath, They were not! There by chance, Kratos! Greece Reborn At the end of God of War 3, all of Greece is plunged into darkness and the world has become flooded by the death of Poseidon. Greece has ostensibly been wiped off the face of the earth. However, in Tyr's treasure room in God of War 2018, Kratos discovers a vase with his enraged visage, 
but on the opposite side is a series of illustrations depicting Greece being rebuilt. Athena herself alludes to the fact that there remain survivors of the fall of Greece when Kratos unleashes hope into the world and she proclaims, They will not know what to do with it! Many fans believe Greece has long since been rebuilt as Kratos wandered for what seemed to be hundreds of years before arriving in Midgard, and it's unlikely that Zeus would have allowed Tyr, a god of war from another realm, to visit his shores and be welcomed with open arms, let alone gifts. What'd you find? Enough distraction. Kratos' immortality. I feel nothing! But you, you feel everything, yet you, you keep trying. I'm not my brother, and if you'd given me what I wanted, it wouldn't have ended this way. Even despite being a god, we've clearly seen how Kratos ages, and on more than one occasion, he has perished and been sent to Hades. Really, it's a surprisingly common problem. So just how immortal is Kratos? Each time Kratos manages to return, it's usually with the help of an outside force such as the Gravedigger or Gaia. There are others who believe Kratos has been cursed with his immortality, either for the murder of his family or by one of the Greek gods, which is why he's unable to die by his own hand. This is highlighted by the line, only a god can kill a god, but it has also been suggested that Kratos refuses to let himself die due to his guilt for his actions, which is why he attempts to become better and is more accepting of his predicted fate as prophesized by the giants. We're so close to the end now. Yes. Yes, we are. Multiverse. When I came to these shores, I chose to live as a man. But the truth is, I was born a god, and so were you. As we touched on earlier, not much was left of Greece by the time Kratos finished exacting his vengeance. And yet, when Kratos arrives in Midgard, and even as he passes through Egypt in his travels, the events of the original saga have not impacted these realms whatsoever and they seem to have no knowledge of the fall of Greece. The leading theory is that while all the realms exist simultaneously, they also exist on separate Earths, one for each pantheon. Further credence is lent to this theory by Tyr himself. Within his hidden temple are treasures from numerous realms, and even his missing panel shows he visited not only Greece, but other realms as well. His travels likely took place long after the fall of Greece since it seems to have taken Kratos almost a thousand years to reach Midgard, and even then he claims he was dragged there, most likely through some kind of portal. Look, clearly that's Tyr. Traveling somehow, perhaps magically. Otherworldly Tyr. We are leaving. Are you coming with us? Along with the multiverse theory comes another theory that Tyr is not actually from Midgard. Some fans believe the true reason he is so despised by the other Aesir is because he isn't one of them. His ability to travel outside of the Nine Realms could have put him at odds with Odin and the many other gods, but some believe that this version of Tyr might have taken what was originally Loki's place within the lore and was found by Odin and adopted as an infant. This would also help explain why Tyr is able to travel to realms outside of Midgard while the other Aesir seemingly cannot. Tyr's resistance to sharing these abilities with Odin also could have been another driving force that led to Odin's resentment of the God of War, wishing to expand his power outside of Midgard and gain even more knowledge and further his control. And you are? His name is Kratos. Kratos? I, I know that name. The other Athena. Death cannot hold those with purpose, Kratos. Athena? I have missed you, Spartan. After Athena's untimely death by Kratos' hand as she attempted to save Zeus, it seemed as though Kratos had lost his only ally. Yet with her reappearance in God of War 3, something seemed to have changed. Athena seemed much more vengeful and power-hungry than before berating Kratos for not giving her the power she felt she was owed before leaving him to bleed out. However, in the follow-up comic series Fallen God, she seems to once again be herself, 
offering Kratos guidance and aid and without her translucent green visage of the third game. Many believe the Athena in 3 wasn't the real Athena, but another deity from the briefly mentioned Higher Plane attempting to manipulate Kratos and absorb the power from the many fallen gods he'd killed. This would also explain why she appears to continue to haunt him in Midgard, still attempting to control the former god of war. You will always be a monster. I know. But I am your monster no longer. The Mask and the Rift. Feels like... Knowledge. Truth. All truth. All the answers. While The Mask and the Rift might just be a MacGuffin to drive the story of Ragnarok forward, many believe it could be the key tying the entire series together. Given the numerous languages scribbled on it, it's possible The Mask has been around for eons, passing from one realm to the next as each tries to unlock its mysteries. Also, not only does the Rift have the same green energy as Athena at the end of 3, it also appears to be the same power used by Garm to rip open the fabric of the realms. There is also the likelihood that the Mask is another object of power like the Blade of Olympus that Athena was so desperate for, and given that failure, has taken to the shadows, encouraging Odin to complete the Mask. MacGuffin or not, there is clearly some kind of incredible power behind both. No! 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 Why did you do that? The Higher Plane. I don't. My sacrifice to save Zeus has brought me to a higher existence. This one gets pretty deep, so we'll try to be as concise as we can. A realm mentioned only once in the entire series it's also the mystery that has plagued fans the longest. Many theorize the higher plane refers to Gnosticism and the Demiurge, a god of gods who created all of the realms and comes from the realm known as Plimora. The Demiurge lusts for power to overthrow the Monad, or highest being who created everything in the known universe. This theory goes even further by asserting that the Demiurge was disguised as Athena at the end of God of War 3 which is backed up by Athena's claims that appearances can be deceiving Kratos. Fans believe the Demiurge is manipulating Kratos into killing the gods of the other realms to absorb their power. This could eventually culminate in Kratos traveling to Plimora and killing the Demiurge after he discovers its plans. You disappoint me, Spartan. <clears throat> Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips for Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.